Good morning everyone and many thanks to the Zemo partnership for inviting me to take part in today's conference. In four months the UK will host the most important conference in a generation. COP26 will be a crucial moment to test our global commitment to fight rising temperatures and prevent irreversible damage to our planet. In the UK, nothing short of a green industrial revolution will do. That doesn't mean stopping doing things or going without. It means doing the same things differently, more sustainably, often more healthily, and with greater awareness, awareness of our impact on the environment. That is the thinking behind our very first transport decarbonisation plan, which the government launched last week. It's a route to net zero emissions across the entire transport sector by the middle of the century. And given transport is our biggest source of greenhouse gases emissions, delivering this plan successfully will be a giant leap towards our 2050 net zero target. It's rightly ambitious, but achievable. It's the product of months of conversations with business, organisations such as the Zemo Partnership and your diverse membership, as well as environmental experts and young people. And I will be the first to say that government won't be able to do this alone. We can set the direction, but we'll need the ingenuity and energy of business and partners to reach the destination. Partners such as Zemo, which for over 18 years has worked with us to develop and test and implement zero emission technology. From electric vehicles and charging infrastructure to the introduction of E10 and clean air zones. So I hope that those of you here today see the transport decarbonisation plan as a final rallying cry to redouble our efforts to achieve carbon neutral travel within a generation. Let me start with road transport, an area of significant focus for you all. We're ending the sale of all new polluting road vehicles from the smallest motorcycles to the largest HGVs by 2040. And all new cars and vans will be fully zero emission by 2035. We didn't take this decision lightly, but given road vehicles account for a fifth of our emissions, it's a crucial step towards decarbonisation. And the response of industry and consumers has given me hope. Only last week, Stellantis confirmed that it would build Vauxhall's electric vans at its Ellesmere port plant, thanks to £100 million of industry and government investment. It will safeguard a thousand jobs in the northwest and is a huge vote of confidence in our automotive sector. And this is on the back of considerable government commitment to spark an electric vehicle revolution. As an EV driver myself, it's something I fully support. We're investing 1.3 billion in our charging infrastructure, including 25,000 public charging devices and more rapids per 100 miles of road than anywhere else in Europe. And while it's getting cheaper each year to make the switch to an EV with over 100 models now on the market, we're going further to incentivise take up investing £582 million to reduce the sticker price of zero and ultra low emissions vehicles. Now, predictions by some of 145 million EVs on the world's roads by 2030 are welcome, but they're only predictions and they require changes in consumer behaviour now. I believe we're heading in the right direction. Given pre-pandemic, road traffic was predicted to grow by 30%. Simply decarbonising road vehicles isn't enough. We need to shift people away from cars and onto public transport, reducing congestion on our already busy roads to the benefit of our economy as well as the environment. That's the driving force behind our recent national bus strategy in what is the biggest shake-up to buses in a generation. We're investing billions to reform and improve bus provision across the country, ensuring it becomes the transport of choice, even for those with a car. We're making buses more reliable, frequent and modern, holding local authorities and operators to account for more bus priority schemes and increased customer satisfaction. As well as cheaper fares, we'll integrate ticketing across train and tram so passengers can travel door to door without setting foot in a car. We already know the green potential of buses, with a full double decker taking the equivalent of 75 cars off the road. But we're going even further, investing £120 million this year alone to add up to 500 zero emission buses to our fleet, as well as supporting infrastructure. This builds on some tremendous existing work, like in Birmingham, where 20 hydrogen buses will take to the streets this year. 
we've begun consulting on ending the sale of new diesel buses with a further consultation planned later this year. While great progress is being made on electrifying cars, buses and rails, we must continue to fund research and development into low carbon fuels and therefore support sectors such as maritime and road freight where there isn't yet a winning technology. One exciting option is green hydrogen, a clean fuel with tremendous potential and one which the UK is uniquely placed to capitalise on given our ability to generate significant power from offshore wind. In fact, the North East produces 50% of the UK's hydrogen, which is why we've chosen Tees Valley to be the home of our first hydrogen transport hub. Armed with £3 million of funding, the hub will boost research, testing and deployment of green hydrogen across our transport sector, hopefully powering a new industrial revolution in the very areas which gave birth to the first one 200 years ago. Before I leave you in the capable hands of Bob Moran, Deputy Director of my Department's Environment Strategy Team to answer any questions, let me reiterate that this is a plan of ambition and intent. It finally puts words into action showing what we're doing and what we will do to tackle the existential threat of this century. It will not be published and then forgotten about. We'll measure progress against it every five years and we'll look to partners such as Zemo, building on years of successful collaboration, to help make it a reality and to ensure we deliver the prosperous and sustainable future this country deserves. Thank you.